You can all see my screen. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Did you make me? You made me a host, right? We made you a host. We'll give it a minute more. All right, but I think it's very good that we're recording that so then we can share it later. We are also hosting the, so this tour only focuses on the gallery participants of the fair, not individual artists. Uh, we are hosting another tour tomorrow and we will likely include some individual artists in that tour, but this tour only covers galleries. Yeah, and if you have any questions in the meantime, you can type them in the chat and we will go around and then if you're interested in learning more about any gallery or you want to contact them uh, just let us know and we can make that happen you can always find them in the map you can use the uh, view list you can find them by list so if you click on view list and then click on cadav galleries sorry when i share my screen it becomes a little slower so <laughs> If you see view list and then click on cut up galleries, you can see them all. And here we have some, so we're going to take you through those. All right, we even lost someone <laughs> along the way, which happens a lot at the art fair. So this reminds me, oh, art gallery. Yeah, this reminds me a lot um, the real art fair experience, you know, when you do a tour of the fair and you are waiting for everybody to come together and then you start walking and there are so many booths and then by the end of the tour you have two people if you are lucky with you. Uh, <laughs> that's how it usually goes. So this is kind of similar but in a digital way. So anyway, I think it's time to start. Uh, welcome everyone. I see a lot of exhibitors here. Welcome exhibitors. Maybe you'll see uh, some uh, galleries that you haven't seen um, during the show. We hope that you are enjoying the show. Uh, as we are recording this, I will start this with a little overview of our uh, great uh, experience. So uh, welcome to Kadaf Online. Um, this is the uh, map of the, um, this is the map of the uh, show. Uh, each dot represents an individual gallery, uh, an individual artist, a gallery, or a partner. Uh, the map is uh, meant for you to really more randomly click throughout and discover something that you haven't uh, uh, been familiar with before. The little gray dots that you see represent the number of people that are currently walking around the fair, which is my personally favorite part about this interface is to see people going uh, around from one gallery to another. And I, I must admit with the team, it's fascinating to, uh, to look at all of this people going around like in a real uh, art fair again. So this is lots of fun. Thank you, Andrea, for zooming in. Uh, we have ongoing programming that you see at the left uh, bottom corner of the screen. We've worked a lot on it. Uh, it's over, now I think it's over 45 hours of recording, uh, recorded and live uh, programming. So we are very proud of what we've done with, uh, with the programming this time around. We are uh, uploading uh, pretty much all of this programming to our YouTube channel. So um, we, we upload uh, each day uh, panels to our, YouTube uh, to, our, uh, to our YouTube channel. So if you missed the talks from yesterday, uh, you can tune in to our YouTube channel and watch them. Uh, it's a mix of live and recorded uh, programming. And then to the left, it's a search um, search field. So we have a lot of partners, a lot more partners uh, uh, than before participating with us uh, this time around. Uh, uh, this is a good way to look at them and to discover them, um, as well as uh, galleries and artists, of course. 
and you can also view, view it as a, uh, as a list. So uh, once again, thank you for joining us for this tour. It's a little bit of an impromptu tour that we decided on. We've been thinking about it for quite a few days, but uh, didn't come, uh, come around to do it. But yesterday night, we thought we should do it. So um, here with my team, uh, uh, Andrea Steuer, who is our wonderful director and CCO, which is a chief creative officer uh, of uh, CADAF, and Chloe. Uh, Smith, no, not Chloe Smith. I forget. <laughs> yes, Chloe Smith. Now I'm blanking out on your last name. I, I'm looking. At the word, the name Chloe uh, doesn't come in my mind with the last name. Smith. But anyway, uh, Chloe is wonderful uh, and uh, is uh, a great uh, uh, artist and gallery liaison that has been working with us already uh, for forever. It, it it's seems the first like edition of Kadaf. <laughs> since at least the first edition of Kadaf, uh, which is wonderful. And we are very happy to have uh, everyone here. Uh, so we structured it is that we um, are doing short overviews of galleries um, at the fair. Again, it's uh, only covering the galleries. Uh, and each of us will, will talk for a little bit. I think we start with Andrea, right? Uh, Andrea and then Maybe go to me and then to Chloe. If I'm not wrong, that's the plan. So please enjoy and uh, please ask your questions in the chat box, and we will try to answer all of them at the end of the of the of the tour. Thank you, Elena. Thank you all for being here. It's so nice to see so many familiar faces, and so happy that you're all participating. So I wanted to start, I have them all open in tabs and sometimes when I share my screen it becomes a little funky, but I wanted to start uh, with Artix Code that is a gallery that focuses on all the algorithmic artists and so they, oh, they've been exhibiting with Kadab since the first edition that happened in Lightbox in New York and they're a uh, platform that supports algorithmic artists and for this edition they have a show by the artist Harshit Agrawal and this show I picked this image because this show is beautiful it's about the artist thinks about identity and he's from India and so he thinks about the whole culture of the mask so the computer is trained with all these different visuals that go from individuality like Self and also all the masks and ornaments that go into a lot of um, they go into a lot of their culture so it ends up producing these artworks that are gorgeous and like are a mix of like all the new and they are meant to be prints also as you can see over here so you can see that even though it's a digital artwork it is still a print uh, physical artwork here so I wanted to show you that one. And if you can see, there's more works by him. The whole show is curated around him. So it's all about faces, traditions, and identity, and the malleability in the age of technology. So you can see this beautiful artworks. And then I wanted to show you um, Novus Art Projects that is, um, gallery that focuses on artists working in new media art and tech and they have a great selection for this edition they have beautiful things but because of time constraints we cannot take you through all the gallery but i'm sure the galleries will be more than happy if you contact them to give you a tour of their booth but i wanted to talk about this specific sculpture by ben snell i think he's um fascinating in the sense that the medium and like how he makes the sculpture ends up being the medium for its creation in a physical space. So how it works is that Ben Snell trains different computers with artificial intelligence. He gives them a lot of classical pictures. So each computer educates itself and ends up creating its own like iteration of a sculpture and designs it and everything. And then Ben Snell takes the computer and grinds it into beats. So then he takes that material that is made from the computer that originally created this sculpture. And with binding material, he, um, that's the material he uses to create these beautiful pieces. 
So in Novus, we have some of his work and feel free to like explore them. They're absolutely gorgeous. There's several different shapes. And I think that it's a very interesting artist. You can see a little bit more about him also and the sculpture from different points of view. For those of you that were in Miami, I'm sure you could see them. They were, he, it was a series of white sculptures. This ones are different colors, but it's really interesting to think that the medium was the creator. So this is our highlight from Novus Art Projects. And then I wanted to show you a new gallery that is with us for this Kadaf Online edition that is called Odalis. And Odalis is a gallery that focuses on kinetic artists and all the historical kinetic artists. And they have galleries in Madrid, in Caracas, and in Miami. And they, even though their programming is not just focused on digital, they have a component that does digital exhibitions. So they work a lot with videos. So what you're seeing right here is a work by Carlos Cruz Diez, a famous kinetic artist from Venezuela, that sadly passed last year in 2019. And this work is still in construction because it's meant to be the centerpiece for this building that is being built in Madrid. So as you go through the building and in the elevator, it's all around the world. It's all around this work and it's all about how you experience it. And since it's all about optics, as you go up in the elevator, you get a sense of like how it looks as you go into the apartments in the corridors and so it's supposed to be like this central like the whole building is designed around this gorgeous gorgeous artwork so this is you going up in the um, in the elevator and so hopefully we'll see it come to life very soon once it's finished being built and then and feel free to check out more of Odalis's artworks. The each wall is supposed to be its own exhibition. So here you can see a picture of how the building is gonna look and how it is being designed with different pieces of the artworks. And so you can take a tour. And what is beautiful is as soon as the building's doors open, we are immediately confronted by this artwork that like invites you in and to keep exploring it. So you can see here, they also brought to this show some artworks by Jesus Rafael Soto. And we are very happy to have the work from Nicolas Schofer also. So I think it's really worth visiting this gallery. And now we have, I wanted to show you a work by Mike Pelletier that is part of the Heart Disc Museum. Uh, the Heart Disc Museum is a museum that is actually held in a hard disk. So the founder, Solomon Lopez, who is also exhibiting, has a booth uh, in the artist section. Okay, let me take off the video, the sound, even though it's great. I'm gonna take it off so that I can show you. Um, so the hard disk museum started as the idea, like the idea of the word museum. You imagine architecture, you imagine a building, and so he, wanted to show all this artists working in the intersection of art and text so he actually built a museum inside of a hard disk so it has the same boundaries and it holds the same information as a museum can and it's archived just like a museum would be archived and so he has a lot of amazing artists that he shows in the museum and here you can see a work by mike pelletier that was also a lumen prize finalist in 2016 he explores how the human body is perceived through technology and how technology, how you can feel technology and how the body can be like something very different when it's shown like this. So it's his work explores the divide between digital and physical space and how technology is used to represent the human body. Uh, I'm sure like during the fair in Arkadav TV, you have also seen his artwork or of still life that is of the fruits that deflate and then reflate and jump around. They're always mesmerizing how they all intertwine. 
So I really wanted to show you this and also invite you to look at the Hard Disk Museum that you can see the whole museum online and they have fantastic exhibitions right now of sound and all this creative coding. So it's definitely my pleasure to show you this. Um, and then I think the last gallery that I'm gonna talk about and then I'll pass it on to Elena is her visions and studio as we are that are a curating group that focuses on female new media artists. And for this edition, they partnered with Infinite Objects in order to bring a digital artwork into someone's house, like bringing digital into a physical space. So they are in this beautiful frames that are created by Infinite Objects where they show all these artists. And this work really like, got me because it's uh it's supposed to be um it's supposed to be like um like one of the small portraits that people used to carry around in their pockets and it's about the Sri Lanka they use the images of Sri Lanka and so you can see it kind of moving but it's supposed to look like something that like came from the future but at the same time has strong ties to the past and then it's moving so it's like an object that is supposed that you think you found but but it's just like a little jewel inside his box like how those artworks used to be perceived and held and before when people used to carry them around so i think that this is gorgeous and you can actually purchase them in the frame so you can exhibit them in your house just how they showed here they have a couple of fantastic ones so if you want to take a look um, you should definitely go into their booth and explore all the different objects that they created. And here I'm just navigating real fast through this one. And many of these artists are also Instagram artists, like they're, they create like different face filters and they create all these different interactive objects. And they're always, I always love looking at them. And I think that make, making them partnership with Infinite Objects made a huge difference in order for you to be able and see them at home in a small sense as how they're meant, be meant to see. So I think that is my, the galleries that I had for you. So now I'm gonna pass it to Elena. Thank you, Andrea. What a wonderful uh, story. <laughs> I'm enjoying this tour. Um, so, in my role uh, of what I'm doing for CADAP and for New Art Academy, I am working a lot with the partners. Uh, that's why I think it would be fair if I <laughs> focus on uh, a couple of partner booths and uh, uh, tell you a little bit about them. Uh, so, uh, the first partner that I want to highlight is that Art Domains. Uh, that Art Domains is a long-term partner of us, of ours, uh, uh, and uh, uh, really supporting us from the first edition of CADAF and also some of our New Art Academy initiatives. For those of you who don't know, uh, that art is a domain. Uh, it's a domain name for the art world. So uh, the artists, galleries, institutions who uh, want to be strongly associated with the art community, uh, they, they pick up this uh, domain and um, uh, their list of domain holders includes very established institutions and museums and so on. So they have recently also developed a product called Digital Twin, which is pretty much a very elegant and simple uh, certificate of authenticity that uh, an artist, a gallery, or an institution can uh, fill up uh, by himself or herself um, online. Uh, we, for this edition of CADAP, uh, uh, that art has introduced uh, um, um, great opportunities for some of our, for some, for all of our artists and participants to uh, take advantage of uh, uh, that art domains and the digital twin um, capacities. So if you're an exhibitor and haven't explored this yet, let me know uh, and we can help you. Uh, 
uh, speaking a little bit about art. <laughs> um, so we are um, here very proud to have Beatforms Gallery uh, presented by uh, Dot Art uh, at this edition of Kadaf. I'm sure uh, a lot of you know about Beatforms Gallery. It's one of the oldest galleries uh, in New York that's uh, uh, dealing with the digital uh, new media art. Uh, this piece is uh, really interesting. Uh, it's a website, uh, and uh, this this piece is actually currently on view in the um, Beatforms Gallery. Um, so it's it's. Uh, I think the exhibit is up and up until August. Uh, it's a, a community piece by uh, a few artists, and it's a work of Mark Dorf, Claudia Hart, Aria uh, Harvey, and and more. And it's uh, literally a tree of life, uh, and it's speaking about uh, uh, speed of time, history, aging, uh, and uh, and technology. Um, the interesting part about uh, uh, how it's shown uh, is that it's a series of videos. Maybe Andrea can show some of them uh, if they uh, load. Yeah, uh, it's a very free and meditative, meditative uh, piece uh, that I really enjoy. Uh, it's also very relevant to the uh, to our uh, today's issues to COVID-19 and how people are thinking uh, about life. Uh, the booth is uh, uh, extensive uh, and well curated. Uh, you can see a lot of different works there uh, by both artist collectives and individual artists. So I recommend uh, checking it out. Patrick Nigger is a lovely artist who has also participated in the previous editions of Kadaf, as well, uh, also uh, presented by that part. It's a fun piece. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this is uh, the second partner that I wanted to talk about. It's called uh, DSL Collection. So DSL Collection was uh, founded by Dominique and Sylvain Levy, who I have the uh, Sylvain privilege of knowing for quite a long time. Uh, they're definitely pioneers in uh, the digital art scene as they have created uh, the museum of their um, contemporary Chinese art. Uh, uh, I'm afraid uh, to say when. Uh, is it 2005? Maybe 2005. Yes. Uh, very early on. Very, very early on. Yeah. Um, so uh, it's really what, what you're seeing right now is the video that actually shows what you would see in VR. So mm -hmm. their story is that uh, they have uh, quite large scale. They have started collecting Chinese, uh, contemporary Chinese works, and a lot of them are uh, extremely large scale. So they didn't have um, first of all, uh, an opportunity to show them efficiently enough. You know, they're, they're located in different warehouses and different storages, and uh, they really wanted to share the works uh, with, the, uh, with the audience. Uh, so that's how the idea of uh, creating a VR environment um, uh, came mm -hmm. around. Uh, and uh, um, that was very, very revolutionary at that time. Now there are a couple of others, uh, uh, similar museums. You probably, maybe you've heard about Kramer Collection and others. This is a very cool piece I like. Uh, uh, they're very involved in Chinese culture. Yeah, it's, it's super, super interesting. They spend a lot of time in China uh, themselves. Now the collection is, uh, the DSL collection is also, um, run by their children uh, and Karen Levy uh, uh, who uh, is daughter of Sylvana and Dominique she now also runs the company called Aika that you can also see here so Aika is a consulting company that's helping corporate clients to um, uh, to uh, to have more art uh, uh, in their collections and also uh, they're working with brands uh, to bring uh, art to the fashion brands and uh, uh, luxury luxury brands and so on. 
uh, we've been lucky to have both Simran and Karen speaking uh, during our cultural programming. I think my conversation with Karen and her partner, uh, Amy uh, from AICA is coming mm. up maybe tonight, maybe tomorrow. I'm not sure. sure. Do you want to <laughs> check? We can check right here in our schedule. So, yeah, this is all the schedule that is left for today. So we have a lot of talks and you see it, Elaine? Mm. No. Oh yeah, I see it, I see it at the, at the bottom tomorrow. Yep. Here, uh, at 4 p.m. tomorrow. Yeah, so you can add that to your calendar if you want to participate in, your talk, in that talk so that you don't forget. Great. And then the last uh, gallery that I wanted to speak about, uh, they're not a partner, they're a gallery, but um, uh, they're also a residency uh, program, Gazelle Art House, that's based in London and Baku. And uh, uh, they work with both uh, digital and physical pieces. But of course, here they show digital pieces. And this is a really uh, interesting work, uh, VR work, uh, 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 that this um, has been created by a, a British uh, duo of artists, Gibson Martelli. And it explores uh, um, uh, the nature of movement uh dance um and uh, uh also very meditative and uh um uh how uh these movements are transferred in the uh into the 3d environment it also has a pretty cool sound uh, i don't know if you want to play it but it's a fun fun sound <laughs> very very contemporary work um seems to be quite interesting um, so we are very happy to have them uh, uh, at uh, TEDAP this time and uh, um, I encourage you to look more at their words. So I guess that's it for me and then uh, we are moving uh, to Chloe. Hi everyone, can you hear me okay? Yeah, it looks like my mic's working. Good to see so many familiar faces. Um, so here I'm going to talk about Breezy Art Gallery. We're looking at Hatha Tao. Uh, Breezy Gallery, of course, if you'll be familiar, um, if you came to Miami, they have a very strong online presence and one of their main missions is to take digital art to physical spaces. Um, they curate art shows all over the world. Um, and they support the digital realm, um, but keeping, of course, the physical component to what they do. Uh, be sure to tune in for the next talk that's happening on Kadath TV. We just had a brief look at the schedule, um, but there is a Q&A with Eleanor Breezy from Breezy Art Gallery. Um, but let's have a little look at um, Hakatao. Um, so they're an artist duo based in Italy um, and fairly influential in the crypto art space. Um, and it's a painting that celebrates the post-COVID-19 renaissance. Um, so it is a physical painting, but it also has a unique blockchain-based token, um, which poses the interesting question of objects uh, being a representation of the token and, and vice versa. Um, the gallery actually published the behind the scenes make of making the painting um, with a live video of Sergio and Nadia painting uh, the black and white details that you can make out there. Um, so that's that's Hakatao. I think I would thoroughly, thoroughly recommend you, you take a look in the booth and explore the, the making of um, and also um, look deeper into blockchain and tokenization. I think it's a really interesting interpretation um, of that. Um, and as I said, I think it's incredibly relevant. We're talking about, um, you know, for the post-COVID post time. So definitely worth something checking out. Um, yeah, you can go to the next one, Andrea. We're looking at, at Snark and Mr. Fox. Um, so they developed a new platform 
AOQ, which is art in the age of quarantine, um, during COVID-19 to help artists um, where they're sort of taking over the control and the sale of their work and simultaneously supporting one another during um, the post-pandemic recovery. Um, so please read further into AOQ, um, it's their attempt to find a more equitable and economic model for the art market. Um, and uh, we don't have all that much time to go into it, but please, please take a look. Um, and we'll talk about Burn Before Reading by Mr. Fox. So the tokens can be claimed for free on snark.art and it's an amazing opportunity to test the investment versus artistic value of the work. Essentially, it's an artificial intelligent based project uh, where it's begun by offering 10,000 blockchain based fortune cookies. Um, and the collectors are asked to consider the exchange rate between currency and shared experience. So you can either open the token and read the poetry inside it, or it's, and then it's burnt, or you can keep it and then sell it. Um, so it's this play between value and the, the artistic experience, which I think is incredibly um, <laughs> relevant and interesting, especially in the contemporary art market that we're all working in today. And um, you can, we actually got a little bit of an insider tip, you can claim two and then test, test both options. Um, so have a look at that. Again, an element of play involved um, and do some further research. I think it's, it's fascinating and um, really interesting that, um, you know, a gallery is taking part in that. I think it's amazing. Um, and we can go to the next one, Andrea. Um, so now we are at Sky Fine Foods. So they are a experimental and uh, collaborative project space um, and they represent international contemporary and other artists so uh, predominantly artists with new ideas working with new methods and specifically focused in uh, digitally informed practices and digital processes and here we're looking at Alex McLeod. Sorry, sorry. Um, can you hear me? All good? Yeah, all good, sorry, I just accidentally <laughs> changed your slide. Oh, no problem. Um, so yeah, Alex McLeod, um, I did a little bit of further research on him and CBC Arts actually covered this artist and news article and I love this quote, it said, Alex McLeod uses digital technology as a playground, which I think is just such a perfect statement. Um, he focuses, as you can see evidently here, on landscape work, um, and he's really interested in pushing the meaning of landscapes in the, in the traditional sense. So he wants to push it forward and allow for new meanings and definitions of landscapes to be built. Um, and he works primarily with digital landscapes as an a way to escape his urban environment. Um, he's heavily informed in sort of gaming, gaming landscapes and building those kind of escapes. He, he studied painting, but later switched to computer generated digital imagery um, and fantastical is, is a, world that, a word that comes up a lot in his practice. Um, the fantastical, the escape, um, and the, sort of the dichotomy between the real and, and virtual landscapes. Um, and he was also an early contributor to post-internet art, but he, he managed to resist closed circuit referencing um, because he sort of opts for idealized landscapes and, and phenomena. He's Canadian, which I think is appropriate to mention here as well. You can see the, the trees and the landscape and the frost. Um, but check his work. I think he's very heavily followed on social media as well. Um, and a very exciting world and practice to dive into and, and look at a bit further. Uh, we can go to the next one, yeah. So we're looking at Kate Vass Gallery here um, and The Prophecy by Osinachi. Um, so Osinachi is actually a digital artist from Nigeria that was discovered by the curator Jason Bailey. Um, and the artist would 
make these amazing, amazing paintings with the one program that he had, which is Microsoft Word, which um, even myself <laughs> and all of us, we all kind of know how to work Microsoft Word, but the idea that you can make beautiful art through it is just absolutely mind blowing. Um, and it just shows us the amazing mastership of the technique with such a tricky program to use for creatives. I mean, it's Word, it's letter base so I, I i just find it absolutely amazing um and he his works are extremely relevant to current issues he's he's looking at COVID 19 and black lives matter um and it's also incredibly powerful because it is so personal um he's now represented by kate bass and he's selling his work um on multiple blockchain based art mar marketplaces um so a lot of well-known ones i would really just just highly as i said with all the ones to highly highly recommend checking out um his series um little know about nigeria when COVID 19 hit um it was um what he's he's sort of referring to here is that the country sort of turned to to religion i think there's a heavily historical practice of turning to religion to seek protection in the country um I'm not a connoisseur of African traditional religion or Christianity, um, but there are a lot of themes um, that are evocative in his work. Um, and I mean, so much to, to look into and research and, and get involved with it. As you can see, it's beautiful work and I, I'm still can't believe that he's using Microsoft Word. Um, so <laughs> there's an option to buy his pieces um, as an NFT plus print bundle. Um, so, so if you're interested, I would, I would recommend looking at it. Um, I just think his work is fantastic. Um, and Joe, we can go to the next one. And here we are at Muranova Gallery. Um, we're looking at Victoria Pidas. Um, the gallery in general of the years has been extremely successful in the Ukrainian art scene. Um, and they've become very influential um as a site for discussion and public awareness um of the importance of controversial artistic discussions and current artistic discussions um they've taken part in uh loads of international art fairs um, and i'm so glad that we have them in our programming um we're looking at Victoria Pidas. Um, so her works are digital compositions um, and she plays with concepts of reality. Um, her background is interesting because she's, she's got a background in photography and then she went back into painting and then back again into photography with the use of computers and, um, and they have this painterly uh, quality. Um, there's one center image, I think Andrea, which is, uh, Maybe if you can just continue strolling, I think you'll get, people will get the gist of what I say. I don't say here. really abstract. Um, I'm so sorry, I didn't make a note of which one it was, don't worry. Um, but uh, as I said, she's trained in, in photography and she switched to painting um, because she felt that photography had too much reality uh, within them. And then after two years of painting, she switched back to photography, craving the reality of the real world instead of her, her painter's studio. But when she returned to photography, she chose to embrace her knowledge of technology. She's fairly young, um, so she was brought up with a sort of awareness of technology. And um, so she combined all of that to create this now epitomous body of work where she's got this interest in, in reality from, um, being raised in post-socialist uh, Ukraine and then moving to Berlin at 22. Um, and she felt there was this sort of disillusion between the reality of her photography and her own life experiences. Everything that was just pure photography in Berlin was just a little bit too shiny uh, to reflect her, her real life experiences. So she turned to um, computers. Um, she was fascinated by algorithms. Um, and she actually uses this program um, that architects use to create a 3D modeling of space. And she, she chooses to not put all the images into the program, 
so that the, 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 the program is sort of forced to make its own analysis of what is, what's there in the space and it creates these fluid lines and she works around with the space to capture um, these emotive sort of images of, you know, uh, 2D objects, turns them into 3D and then back into 2D. Um, so yeah, I would check out her work. She, she's also, she prints them very large scale and some beautiful images of her work in these galleries and they, they take off a, a life of their own where you, when you see them in space um, and her history is also fascinating. Um, if you go back and check out the rest of her work in this, in this piece, I'm sorry, I didn't make a, work, uh, a note of it, but when you see them, you'll realize that there's, you know, she's heavily, um, experimental and sort of her abstract photography um, and it's comparable with with some works of Thomas Ruff and Cindy Sherman and Wolfgang Timmons just in the terms of being abstract and and fluid but also photography based so then there's also the you know the movement and the expressiveness is you know can be compared to Helen Frankenthaler if I can make that comparison but it's incredibly expressive uh, but yeah that's that's me with Victoria Peters um, I think that's it, Andrea. Thank you, Chloe. So, yeah, I think we went through most of the galleries and really 